you, Smoky Mountain Brass Quintet, for that beautiful performance. We are honored, by the way, by the presence of the, composers, the uh, composer of this fanfare, Mr. David Sampson. David came all the way down from New Jersey to be with us today. David, will you please stand and allow us to show, you, show us your appreciation. Welcome, friends and neighbors, to the dedication ceremonies for the new Jackson County Public Library Complex. My name is Howard Allman, and I'm the chair of the Jackson County Public Library. When I look out on this beautiful morning and this beautiful structure behind me, I'm reminded of a story I once heard about a man who had died and gone to heaven. St. Peter met him at the pearly gates and was showing him those streets paved with gold mansions in the clouds, everyone singing and flying through the air with their wings and robes and halos. And as he was making his way around heaven, he passed by an alleyway and looked down it and saw a bunch of people chained, shackled to the walls. And he turned to St. Peter and said, what could these people have done to have been chained to the walls in heaven? And St. Peter said, Oh, well, those are just mountain people from North Carolina, and if we unchain them, they'll just go home again. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to some of the folks sitting up here who will be speaking to you today. If you will please stand as I call your name. Uh, Mr. Vance Davidson, uh, Fontana Regional Board, Chairman-Elect. Ms. Dottie Brunette, the Jackson County Public Library. Mrs. Belinda. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Carlisle's not able to make this to uh, today, her husband had an auto accident and uh, she's not going to be with us, so we'll have to strike her from our program. She assures us that he's all right but and wishes us the best. Uh, Ms. Mary Boone, the State Librarian of North Carolina. <laughs> Mr. Doug Cody, one of our current county commissioners. <laughs> Mr. William Shelton, one of our former county commissioners. Mr. Boyce Deeks, representing Congressman Heath Schuler. Mr. Freddie Harrell, representing Senator Kay Hagan. Mr. William Hobbs, with USDA Rural Development. Mr. Ethan Stacks, the current chair of the Fontana Regional Library Board. We also have seated up here some special guests uh, who will not be speaking, but we'd still like to recognize them. Uh, Mrs. M Ms. Mary Otto Selzer and Dr. Johnson Bott. Dr. Bott is inside. He's uh, unable to stay in the sun very long, but we got you, Dr. Bott. Uh, Ms. June T. Smith, the president of Friends of the Library. And last but not least, Ms. Karen Wallace, director of the Fontana Regional Library System. We also have with us three people out in the audience who have been the literal brains and brawn behind this construction project. Uh, I'd like to recognize Mr. Donnie Love, our architect, with, please stand, Donnie, with uh, McMillan, Madison, and Smith. Uh, Ms. Lynn Wilson, our interior design. We stand with Lynn from McMillan, Madison, and Smith. And Mr. David Case, uh, the project manager for Brantley Construction. David, where are you? <laughs> Sorry to there you are. We're also honored to have uh, a couple of our legislators here with us. We have uh, Senate State Senator Jim Davis. Jim? <laughs> and Representative Phil Hare. Phil. <laughs> Folks. I can't tell you how proud I am at this moment when I look out on our downtown Main Street area, look out to the plot balsam some range wrapping her big arms around us like a, like a bear hug from a dear friend. And I turn to see this jewel of structure, this temple of learning and history. I get a bit choked up. Many times over the past 10 to 12 years, I have wondered if we would ever see this day come to pass. But through the persistence 
dedication and the vision of the people of Jackson County, we have made it happen. From the folks at the USDA and SECU who provided a half a million dollars in funds provided, we could match them, and we did. <laughs> to our national and state legislatures who contributed their fair share, to our county leaders, our former county commissioners, Mr. Brian McMahon, <laughs> Mr. Tom Massey, <laughs> Mr. William Shelton, <laughs> Mr. Joe Cowan, <laughs> Mr. Mark Jones, <laughs> and last but not least, to our former, former county manager, Mr. Ken Westmoreland who had the courage and foresight to allocate the monies to build this library and save this historic old courthouse. Right. And to our new county commissioners, Mr. Jack Debnam, Mr. Doug Cody, Mr. Charles Elders, Mr. Joe Cowan, and Mr. Mark Jones, and again, last but not least, to our current county manager, Mr. Chuck Wooten. We thank you, gentlemen, for sharpening your pencils and finding the money in these times of budget cuts to actually increase the funding for this library so that a faculty that's five times the size of the old one could serve the citizens of Jackson County. We thank you. And to the citizens of Jackson County who gave until it hurt to raise the funds for this library, to the children who read over 4,000 books and raised close to $8,000, we thank you. You know, when I think about all of these things, it makes me want to sing. <laughs> so, if you will indulge me, if you will please stand, you will find an insert into your programs. This is a song that I learned in Miss Maud Inslee's fourth grade class at Webster Elementary School many, many years ago. It is the state song of North Carolina, and I'll only make you the first verse and chorus that you see there. Please stand. Mrs. Zinsley died a few short months ago at the age of 96. So, Mrs. Zinsley, this one goes up to you. Carolina, Carolina, heaven's blessings attend her. While we live, we will cherish, protect, and defend her. Though the scorner may sneer at and witlings defame her, still our hearts fill with gladness whenever we name her. Hoorah, hoorah, the old North say forever. Hoorah, hoorah, the good old North say. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you will, please welcome me. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Vance Davidson. Please join me in this invocation of gratitude and thanksgiving. Let us bow our heads and open our hearts and minds. <coughs> Good and gracious Creator, we gather here today in celebration with thankful and joyful hearts. Thankful to you and all who visioned, planned, labored, and contributed to bring this Jackson County Public Library complex to today's wonderful and extraordinary reality for our community and all its citizens. We humbly ask your blessings and protection on this library complex. Those who work and serve here, those who explore and investigate, 
those who seek a broader and deeper understanding of the world in which we live, and for those who may be simply seeking a moment of peace and rest. In this place, may our journeys be filled with curiosity, a deep and abiding sense of purpose, and an appreciation of all that we discover while on our quests. We thank you once again for leading us to this celebration day. We now ask that you guide, direct, and keep us all in your loving care. Amen. Thank you, Vance. And now I'd like to welcome Ms. Dottie Brunette, Jackson County Library. Many times, twice with a crowd in front of me once at the groundbreaking for this building and today. And for those of you who know me well, I am almost rendered speechless, which is a little frightening. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge two people in the audience, one of whom uh, I consider a good and dear friend. The other one has been a sister of my heart since uh, I very first knew about her. That's Jeanette Newsom, former librarian for Jackson County for many years, and Margaret Sheehan, Jackson County's first professional librarian. <laughs> I'd like to thank a couple of folks that have passed on to that great biblioteca in the sky, and that's the Sadie Luckett and Mrs. Grace Beck, who we, none of us would be here as library lovers if they hadn't shepherded us. Uh, through to this point. And I did spend a lot of time trying to consider what I'd say today. Of course, my first thought was to try to thank everyone that made today possible. But you don't want to sit here that long because it will take on the aspects of the Academy Awards. So it uh, seemed prudent to try to look a little further afield. As a librarian, of course, I'm a lover of books. <laughs> and rhetorically, what are books made of? words. I got to thinking about some words. The first one is the community. Community that pushed this project forward and uh, I cannot say enough words about that other than what cannot be achieved in one lifetime will happen when one lifetime is joined to another lifetime. We listen to them. We listen to our, what our community desired for our library and learn. To quote Alice Miller, learning is the result of listening. And by learning, we begin to dream. Some uh, men see things as they are and ask why. I dream things that never were and ask why not. This is an original. George Bernard Shaw said it first, and Bobby Kennedy said it second, and it's been my life ever since. On November 22, 1970, Jackson County's first librarian, Ms. Lillian McCannon, so, uh, helped celebrate the opening of the first dedicated Jackson County Library building just down the street from where we are with these words, a dream come true. Today, we are gathered at this spot as a living, listening, and giving community to celebrate the power of making a long overdue project a magnificent dream come true. To all here and all whose hearts are here, all I can say from my heart to you is thank you. And then, thank you for the don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Now we'd like to welcome to the stage Ms. Mary L. Boone, the North Carolina State Librarian. Thank you all very much. Uh, first of all, as you heard earlier, Secretary of Cultural Resources Linda Carlisle was not able to come at the last minute. 
but she sent a letter with me that she wanted me to read to you because she was so disappointed she wasn't going to be here today. It says, Dear friends, I so regret that I cannot be with you today to mark the grand opening of the Jackson County Public Library. Your hard work, vision, and dedication to this great public and private partnership will benefit Jackson County Library patrons, young and old, for many years to come. Libraries are important to the health and vitality of every North Carolina hometown. My library card is one of the most important cards that I carry in my wallet, and I know that this new library will see lots of bright young faces and lifelong winners come through the doors, eager to get those smartest cards of their own. I have the honor of working for Governor Bev Perdue, who generally carries a book with her wherever she goes. She focuses on jobs and education every day, and our state, state libraries are key to fulfilling both. As focal points for communities, library programs and services make all our lives richer. Congratulations to Jackson County Public Library staff and friends for bringing this project to life. It is a great achievement. I am also delighted to be here today. Uh, this was very special for me, and it was definitely, you know, in the Michelin Guide, they give three stars for the best places, and three stars means it's worth a journey. This was definitely worth the journey. Just to see this beautiful building sitting on this hilltop. Catherine Bisher, who writes um, books about architecture in North Carolina from NC State University, has written in her guide to Western North Carolina architecture, she says, that the finest vista in Silva is from the courthouse atop a hill and framed by the surrounding mountains. I love that image. I like the image of it being a hug. She also goes on to say, and this is a quote, with its hilltop position offering a dramatic Beaux-Arts approach, this is one of the most spectacularly situated courthouses in North Carolina. Today we can stand before this historic courthouse and say it's also one of the finest public libraries in North Carolina. <laughs> the public library provides what is often called the third place, that place away from home and work, which is where community people gather. And in his book that describes this, Ray Oldenburg notes that the third place is important for democracy, for civic society, for civil society, for civic engagement, and for establishing feelings of a sense of place. Doesn't this building give Jackson County and Silva the most incredible sense of place? Also, when you look inside the library and you see all the names here and there, the children who read the books, when you see the displays, you can see how much civic engagement is clearly alive and well in Jackson County because there's been so much contribution by the members of the community to this building. I'm also happy to say that we at the State Library made a contribution. Through our federal funds for libraries, the Library Services and Technology Act program, we have uh, technology grants as well as other grants, and we've just donated during this past year a technology grant that has added to the public computing uh, situation here at the library so that you know when you come in, not only do you have a historic building, you are assured to find 21st century library services inside. One of the things I like to say about libraries is that they are the place where our children experience not only the joy of reading for the first time, it's where they first encounter civic responsibility. That library card is the greatest gift that you can give to a child. And have you seen the teen center inside? A space just for teens, it's theirs. I talked to a 14-year-old boy who was inside there. He thought it was great. He said, it's just right. And what I like the best, he said, and it'll be even better when there are more books. So let us know that our teens do more than just text message these days. It's also a place where students can do homework and homeschoolers can have a library at all. But for all of us adults, it's also the place where we know and value the joy of reading ourselves. And then nowadays people say, well, we don't need public libraries anymore because there's the internet. No, the internet does not provide the joy of reading. And when you think back on libraries, all the way back to Alexandria in Egypt, you know, books in those days were in the form of papyrus. 
Today they might be electronic books, they might be printed books, they might be audio books, but they're still books and we still love reading them. And that's what this library will provide to this community. In addition, our libraries today provide so much more. Uh, there are those in our communities who don't have computers at home. There are those who are unemployed. There are those who don't know how to use a computer to find a job. Those are all kinds of things that our public libraries are doing today. Not only helping people find job listings, apply for jobs, work on resumes, they're also doing training classes in how to use computers, which in the end makes our community members more employable. So it's a very different and exciting thing to see in our library. We're all really worried about our economy today. We know as librarians that during periods of economic downturn, public library usage always increases and this recession has been no exception. All over our state, libraries during our times of greatest budget cuts are experiencing some of our times of highest usage. The American Library Association tells us that at nationally, public library use is at an all-time high. So if someone tells you you don't need a public library because you've got the internet, you can tell them that. We librarians also know that when a new library is built or renovated, that usage always increases so that you can be assured that this isn't just going to be for this week where we have all these special events, but for long years to come, this library will be buzzing with activity. The Jackson County Public Library will serve as both a beacon and a mainstay for this community. A beacon to bring new people in and a mainstay for those of you who have spent so much time and effort and work and donations to make it possible. I just want to thank you for inviting me to be here with you on this wonderful day to honor the past and embrace the future at this wonderful public library. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Up next, we have uh, one of our local fellows that's going to come up and speak. Uh, I've known this man probably all of my life. As a matter of fact, my grandfather lived right up in Coke Creek where his father had a little store that you could buy anything from four ply tires to double O K double O K that. <laughs> and uh, as, as, as a matter of fact, every time Papa came home from anywhere, he would stop and fill up at Cody's gas station. Sometimes it took nearly a dollar. <laughs> so, anyway, please welcome Mr. Doug Cody. officials, library personnel, and most of all, citizens of Jackson County, I would like to welcome you to the grand opening of our magnificent new library. I am Doug Cody, Vice Chairman of the Jackson County Commissioners and member of the Library Board. On behalf of the current and previous County Commissioners, I would like to personally thank everyone involved in this project for their hard work, persistence, and positive attitude. It is truly amazing and a and a credit to the spirit of this community that so many people came together to make this library a reality. Almost 100 years ago, a small group of visionaries decided to build this beautiful courthouse on the most prominent site in Silver. Over 100 steps were constructed to lead from Main Street to the Grand Entry. As time went by, a statue, monuments, and a fountain honoring our fallen military heroes were added. A clock was also added to the cupola. Sixty years ago, a time cap capsule was uh, uh, buried and remains on the grounds only to be opened in 2051. One might easily equate the climbing of those steps, aided by the sacrifices and contributions of those that came before us, as an individual struggle to gain knowledge, the knowledge necessary to function in and contribute to our society. Now let's fast forward through several generations to today when we all are privileged to attend the grand opening of another beautiful, enduring structure that shares this prominent site, our fabulous new library. This site, rich in history and symbolism, was truly the only appropriate location for this new library. One can feel the optimism and pride 
that had to be present when our ancestors stood on this very site to dedicate this historic courthouse. They had confidence in the potential of our fledgling county. Now it is our turn to build upon that legacy, to continue that push toward greater things for Jackson County. This new library is our symbol of confidence in the future of Jackson County. We must use it as a tool to gain the knowledge necessary to accomplish greater things. In so doing, we can make Jackson County a better place, a more prosperous place for us and the generations that will follow. Thank you again for attending this event, and I hope each of you take the time to enjoy and explore your remarkable library complex. Next, we have with us Mr. William Shelton. I've known William about all my life, too, except for elementary school. He went to school way off down at Quality. Uh, and I went way up at Webster. But then uh, we were in high school together, and as a matter of fact, I'm sure he's got a great speech because we had Miss Jean Ellen Majors all four years for English. <laughs> so uh, I know he'll knock him dead. Thank you, William. Thank you, Howard. And uh, you know, if you're going to MC an event like this, you should make it uh, to where you're a little bit less of a hard act to follow. <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate uh, Howard's comments and all the comments of the, of the previous speakers. You know, this um, people come up to me a lot and they say, "Oh, we really appreciate all the hard work you put into this library." And I tell you, I haven't. I really haven't put a lick of work into this library. <laughs> um, you know, it was, a, it was just a privilege for me to be at the right place at the right time when, it, when the idea came together. I, I remember uh, Tom Massey and myself were talking about how this old courthouse, you know, it's a vision, it's a, it's a symbol of the county, one of the primary symbols, and it had become a facade. And it, it was pretty much, um, I guess you could call it a tired old money pit. And so... The idea came to where we, you know, we needed to to restore this courthouse, and there had been a, a huge need for a new library. And to combine that, and to be able to to create a place where our history, and our culture, and our quest for knowledge could come together, uh, seemed like a great idea at the time. And uh, one of the easiest parts of my job, uh, I knew we needed a third vote, and I remember distinctly bringing Mark Jones up here and given him the hard sell, but the hard sell wasn't needed. And I guess the true mark of whether or not this project would be a success would be how, how the public and how the community got behind it. And that was really the only stressful part from my seat. And it's just been inspiring to see all the work that's been, that's been put in by so many people. You know, politicians, it's said, and I think it's true, that we tend to stand up and, you know, take the credit when things go well, and we also uh, are in a position to take the blame when things go right. I mean, go wrong. <laughs> well, see, wrong is not part of my vocabulary. Uh, uh, because I'm not here to, I'm definitely not here to take credit, and I'm certainly not here to take the blame. Uh, because I don't see that anybody could call this a failed project. Uh, I, I'm here to remind you that who the real credit goes to is the citizens of this, uh, of this county. And it was built by you, for you, for your use, regardless of your age or sex or uh, race or religious or political beliefs, uh, for your free use to come and practice one of the fundamental freedoms that, you, that we've been granted in this country. And you built it beautiful enough and unique enough to inspire generations to come. And I, I, I really appreciate this opportunity. And I'm gonna close with one of my favorite quotes. And it's, a, it's one I thought you know came to mind at the very start of the project. And it's one of my favorite ones because it's really short and it's really easy to remember. And it's from Henry Ford, and it says whether you, he said, whether you think you can or whether you think you're, you can't, you're right. 
And I think, I think that it's obvious that the citizens of Jackson County thought that they could when it came to, to this project. Thank you. Thank you, William. Thank you. And uh, next up, we've got another gentleman that I have known basically all of my life. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe his senior year in high school, I was the mascot for Silver Webster High School that year. And rumor has it that he and his buddies would offer me candy to stick my tongue out at Principal Carl Hooper. Carl Hooper. But I, I don't think I would have done that. I, I <laughs> Please welcome to the stage uh, representing uh, Representative Pete Schuler, Mr. Boy Steeds. We all remember Howard all his life, too. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like uh, Dolly Burnett, if you'd come forward, please. Dolly, I have a flag here flown over the U.S. Capitol, and I'd like to uh, give you this from Congressman Heath Schiller uh, to either fly here over the county or be placed in the library. And thank you for all you do. Thirty minutes, and I'll stop. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to represent the congressman. Uh, I wish he could be here today. This is a awesome day. I'm sure there'll be photographs of this day, like the, all, all the ones we see post Civil War of things that's happened, and we see the very famous pictures of Randy Camp. This is like Christmas in June uh, for the people of Jackson County. Uh, I'd like to thank all the leaders that had the vision to see this, make this happen. Uh, many times uh, we look back at uh, hardships and the times that we went through trying to figure out where we're going to put the library and the struggle and the hard work that everyone did. It seems like that uh, when you struggle that far and work that hard, then uh, usually when something happens, you even appreciate it more. Uh, I had my grandson Jack yesterday, and we went through the library and uh, through the courthouse, and it was just absolutely awesome. And someone asked me, says, uh, what do you think about it? And I thought about the lady just a few evenings back that, from Pennsylvania that won the spelling bee. If any of y'all watched that, and uh, I could never get the first letter in, and I lost some 14 <laughs> other letters, right? Some of the... But at the very end, when she won the spelling bee, they asked her, what, what do you think? Now, what's your reaction? And she says, after spelling all these words that she'd spelled, she said, that, that I can't find a word that can explain how I feel at this moment. And when you look at the new library and look at this structure, really there's not a word almost that can describe uh, what we have here. Uh, someone I'd like to mention is Mr. Ronnie Smith, the, well, the architects. That he's a... Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie, uh, some of y'all know, was born and raised here in uh, Jackson County, went to Clinton University, and uh, uh, he was responsible for, the, for a lot of the architect work on this facility. And I know his mom and dad, who were both educators, would be very, very proud, Ronnie, uh, to know what part you played in this. Uh, we spend a lot of money, sometimes there's a lot of criticism in how we spend money in government, but sometimes you can look back how we spend money and it's very darn good how we've spent money, and this is one of those problems. <laughs> and I know I was thinking last night about what to say up here, and I know the Judge Lever Woods and Glenn Hughes and Marcellus Buchanan's and Margaret Henson's, a lot of y'all don't know those folks, but I know they, those type of people would be very proud to know that this courthouse has been preserved and it's it's just ironic that the library saved the courthouse. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, there's some song that talks about it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> well for years it's four fifteen somewhere <laughs> when, you, when you look at the clock. And now the clock's running, I'm hopefully it's saying 20 to 11. <laughs> and our county is again on the move and progressing, and thank y'all very much.
Well, now, unfortunately, I didn't go to school with the next few speakers, so I don't have any funny stories to tell you about them. Uh, <laughs> first, we'd like to welcome, uh, representing Senator Kay Hagan, Mr. Freddie Harrell. Thank you very much. Uh, boss is always a hard act to follow, except when it comes to spelling. <laughs> Some of you may not. Uh, wow. On a count of three, could I hear everyone say, wow, one, two, three, wow. wow. That's all I could say and think of when I came into this facility this morning. But I am Freddie Harrell. I'm Western Regional Liaison for Senator Kay Hagan. I'm so happy to be here to represent Senator Hagan this morning. She regrets that she could not be here, but asked me to read the following remarks on her behalf. Congratulations to Jackson County on this morning's momentous occasion. The opening of this library demonstrates the immense dedication of the friends of the library, local elected officials, and the citizens of Jackson County to see this project through. You have not only constructed a new state-of-the-art library, but also saved one of Western North Carolina's most beautiful structures, the historic Jackson County Courthouse. By providing unmatched access to books of all genres, libraries encourage a love of reading at an early age. As a mother of three, I finally remember taking my kids to the local library so they could pick out books we could read together. Literacy is the foundation of a well-rounded, strong education. And children who are proficient in reading and writing are far more likely to succeed in school and in life. We need to equip each and every child with the reading and writing skills needed to succeed in today's 21st century workforce. And I can think of no better way to begin a lifelong love of reading than in a beautiful and well-equipped library such as this new Jackson County Library. I cannot wait to visit this beautiful facility, and again, I salute you, the citizens of Jackson County, for making this dream a reality. This is truly a remarkable feat, one which will serve the citizens of this community for generations to come. And as your campaign slogan says, you have truly honored the past and embraced the future. Sincerely, U.S. Senator K.R. Hagan. Thank you. I'd ask, please invite me back to the opening of the time capsule. <laughs> Thank you, Freddie. Uh, next, we have with us a uh, gentleman who is responsible for big chunk of change here. Uh, please welcome Mr. William Hobbs of the USDA Rural Development. <laughs> Thank you very much, Howard. Now, Boris, my, my notes said I had 30 to 50 minutes to talk, so uh, maybe I need to cut mine back a little bit. Uh, he said that's going to take care of it. I'm not perspiring up here. I'm listening. Uh, the, the view up here is a whole lot different from the view down at the end of the steps uh, when we presented the check last May. Uh, it, it, it's nice at both levels. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's delightful to be here. I want to bring you all uh, greetings today on behalf of my state director, Randy Gore. Uh, and again, it's, it's great to be with you to celebrate the completion of this wonderful renovation and expansion of your landmark courthouse building and your library. This complex is a great example of dedicated teamwork, and USDA Rural Development is particularly pleased to participate in this community-wide partnership. Our $200,000 grant was just a small portion of the total needs that the friends of the Jackson County Main Library raised. And we certainly want to thank the Congressional and Senate offices for appropriating these funds that we could use to reinvest in rural America. We, we, it ain't happening unless these two guys' bosses are making it happen for us. So uh, we appreciate what you folks do and what your bosses do. I understand Fontana Regional Library involves libraries in Bryson City, Cashers, Franklin, Highlands, Nanahala, and Silva, as well as the Roving Reader Bookmobile. Let me share with y'all something. USDA Secretary Tom Vilsack's wife is a former librarian in Iowa, and she has brought a heightened interest to USDA Rural Development's efforts to improve the quality of life in rural areas with assisting library projects. Pam Hyson, our area director, excuse me, your area director in charge of our Asheville area, would you please stand up, young lady? <laughs> you, you keep standing, I'm going to gush on you for a minute. 
Pam is the RD staffer who made this grant happen. I just have to be uh, fortunate enough to be in a position to deliver the check. Pam's been a colleague of mine for over 25 years, and I can assure you that RD's efforts in the mountains are very well executed by Pam and her staff. Unfortunately, none of her other staff will be with her today, but she's got a lot of folks backing her up also. But to give this funding some oomph when it was submitted to the National Office for Funding, we did attach a photo of a staff chair that appeared to have been eaten by a chair monster. <laughs> We said, there's some tremendous needs up here, and uh, <laughs> evidently that worked. <laughs> it helped. You know, librarians must answer a special calling to serve others in the search for knowledge and information. They, were, they indeed are the precursor to Google. Uh, I remember Mrs. Proctor as the Kenston High School librarian and her thoughtful, kind delivery of guidance when I was searching to complete a report or a project. World Book, Compton, Collier's. Encyclopedia Britannica, that was the one with no pictures. Uh, Standard <laughs> Course, Moody's, Dun & Bradstreet, all these were available to me with the help of a great librarian. Uh, I was, if I could, could I ask the library staff to stand for a second, please? And the friends of the library to stand. But I bet you if I do, everybody's going to stand, aren't they? <laughs> Keep your seat. I just want to say, Director Karen Wallace, uh, Ms. Dottie Burnett, friends of the Jackson County Library, Main Library, library staff, Betty Scriven and Lucy Walker, with whom I communicated about this event, I haven't put my hand on it yet, but I want to shake your hand before I go. I salute your efforts and want to uh, wish you folks continued success. Certainly encourage y'all to consider USDA Rural Development's community programs when you're contemplating your next library expansion. We might not be able to dig as deep as we dug this last time because we had a great pot of money to get into with the ARA funds, but we'd be more than happy to see what we can do to help you out. Also, one other thing, I was real tickled to meet a Rotarian in here. I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Lillington. Literacy is very important to us. We donate a book to our local library, the Hunter County Library, for every speaker who comes to chat with us. And I was particularly tickled to see a, an actual shelf up there with the Rotary Club of Silver. So, again, thank you all so much for this opportunity to be with you. Y'all have a great time here today. <laughs> William, thank you. And uh, our final speaker today is kind of a local boy. He uh, was a physician down in, in Georgia and had a good sense to move up here to the cool of the Great Smoky Mountains. Please welcome Dr. Ethan Stacks, the Fontana Regional Library Chair. Thank you, Helen. How many of you have a library card? It's estimated that at least 60% of the citizens of Jackson County have library cards. I think with the opening of this new library, it may approach 100%. Uh, there are 150 million people in the United States with library cards. This library has been a long time in coming. It has gone through many tribulations. I was in the Navy at one time and it was said that smooth seas never made a skillful sailor. If those words are true, we have certainly produced a virtuoso of a library. I want to thank the taxpayers of Jackson County for this library. And I want to thank the county commissioners for directing our money in the right direction and for their generous support of libraries in general and their commitment to building superior structures. I want to thank all those individuals and groups who made this beautiful structure possible. This is a worthy investment for our county and its use is free, free to every citizen. And it's not only free, but it pays back to our community every day. I welcome the new Jackson County Library to the 21st century. We're going to depart just ever so slightly from our program here, uh, or at least what's listed, um, to make a very special presentation. Vance, I've got the best job here today. I'm 63 years old. My first library card in response to Ethan's comments came to me at the age of five 
at the Wheeler Basin Regional Library in Decatur, Alabama. I've had one ever since then. That's 58 years of continuous library card holding. I owe a debt of thanks to everyone in this community for allowing me to have this kind of facility and allowing all of us to have this kind of facility. There are many who rightfully deserve our collective and community thanks and appreciation for this commitment and unswerving devotion to the task of bringing the Jackson County Public Library Complex to the magnificent reality that is behind me today. But as in any major effort or community project, there are usually individuals who especially lend their vision, their good name and reputation, and their hard work to the successful completion of the project at hand. Today, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to lead us in recognizing and honoring two such individuals. Without their vision, passion, support, and leadership, our journey to today's celebration would have been much more difficult and arduous. Our community and its citizens today and forevermore offer our resounding thank you, job well done to Dr. John Thomas Bunn and to Ms. Mary Otto Selzer, our library <laughs> complex Dr. Bunn, uh, it can't be in the heat very long, so we're going to do a special presentation again in just a moment. But um, in recognition of these two distinguished and outstanding friends of Jackson County, and that's exactly what they are, friends of Jackson County, the Jackson County Public Library Campaign Steering Committee and the citizens of Jackson County wish to honor and acknowledge Dr. John Bunn and Mary Otto Selzer by formally dedicating the library complex terrace and second floor balcony to these two exceptional individuals. We have commissioned a beautiful bronze dedication plaque, and it's heavy, <laughs> to be permanently affixed in a place of prominence to honor, recognize, and thank in perpetuity, the two of you. Mary, Dr. Bunn, please step forward, and Dr. Bunn will be inside, but we'll get him acknowledged later, so that we may uh, express our thanks of this grateful community to you. Please, everyone, join me in thanking Mary and Dr. Bunn. It says, dedicated with deep gratitude to John Thomas Bunn and Mary Otto Selzer in honor of the extensive time, talents, and passion they brought to the task of making the Jackson County Public Library Complex a reality. And it's dated June 11, 2011. Thank you so much. Mary. Before we adjourn, I would also like to uh, express our gratitude to Ms. Betty Screven and her crew of volunteers that have done everything, including everything you see before you today, putting on this, every, this entire show. Betty, thank you. Thank you all. Before we adjourn, something that uh, was said about the library cards and whatnot, and America, I didn't realize until I heard this on the radio the other day, the difference between us and the other countries in the world. Did you know that in France, you have to be certified to go into the library? Here, all you need is a library card. 
Ain't this a great country? And, and you don't even need that. Just your presence. So, ain't this a great country? At any rate, um, we are going to now adjourn to the other side of the building for the ribbon cutting. Uh, we hope you have a We hereby dedicate the opening of the new Jackson County Public Library Complex to the citizens of Jackson County. There's entertainment. <laughs> There's lots of entertainment. Uh, we're going to be having, let's see, Romeo and Juliet doing the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet right over here on the balcony. Right now, uh, there's going to be music clogging, storytelling. I know there's going to be some storytelling at 2 o'clock in the children's room because I'm doing it. So, uh, what else? That's good. All right. Please, welcome. Come on in.